When I arrived at the Baton Rouge, Louisiana airport February 12th, 2008, I feared I'd gotten there just in time for a natural disaster. So here I am doing something you should never do at home, kids. I am uh, shooting myself while driving a car. And I just left the Baton Rouge airport. I'm headed to St. Francisville, where I will find Myrtle's Plantation. And let me tell you, this is my first time in the Baton Rouge area, and it is one rainy, dreary, bleak day. In fact, there are uh, tornado watches all over the place, and we just had a large rash of tornadoes go through Tennessee, which is not far from my place in North Carolina, so let's hope that we don't have a similar phenomenon that breaks out here in uh, Louisiana. But let me tell you, if ever a story began, it was a dark and stormy night. I think this might be the one. Right after shooting that, I encountered a bridge that was flooded and had collapsed. After a long detour through the swamps and bayous, I was, ironically enough, relieved to arrive at America's most haunted mansion. I won't go into the history of this place, you can find that easily enough on your own, but there have supposedly been at least ten murders here, some confirmed. Those include a slave girl named Chloe, who was hanged here. One owner was shot on the front porch and barely dragged himself up the stairs where he collapsed dead on step number 17. To this day, some psychics can't walk past step number 17. They say there is a force field there. My room for two nights was the General David Bradford Suite. As you can see, with its high ceilings and four-poster bed, it looked like a haunted room. There was no TV, phone, or internet access, and cell coverage was spotty. If it weren't for the electric lighting and toilet, I might have been living in 1796, the year this place was built. The floor looked fine to the naked eye, but check it out in infrared mode. There were odd stains all around, including tiny footprints. Could this be blood? And so here I am in America's most haunted bedroom. After dinner at a fantastic restaurant on the property, I retired to my room all alone that evening. With the lights out, weird stuff began to happen. First, there was a strange noise. Was this just a cat in heat? Probably, but it certainly set the mood. Next, bizarre surges of electromagnetic energy began moving around the room. And then, the rapping began. Turn up your volume all the way and listen closely. It was loud in the room, but fainter on videotape. Nonetheless, I have used no enhancement whatsoever, so this is the real thing. If there is some ghost or spirit here, if there is someone here, and you would like to communicate with me, I just heard that knock. Could you please do that again? Thank you. Um, could you do that again? Thank you. I was chilled by how instantly the rapping responded well, to my requests. To Surely, it was intelligent. This continued throughout the night. And I'm speaking to, to you, the presence. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
At one point, I even took out my tri-field for more readings. Suddenly, I lost it. Did I drop it? Shit. Or did something pull it from my hand? Shit. I'm lying down. Going to sleep. I still hear some weird rumblings, but... Do you hear that? When I awoke the next day, I went outside to investigate the grounds. It had rained all night, yet there were no footprints or other disturbances in the mud around the room. And there's no way a tree branch could have caused the knocking I heard. Even if it had, how could that explain its response to my requests? The staff had no explanation, but said they were surprised I hadn't experienced more. That's right, even more there. The second night, everything was as quiet and peaceful as you can imagine. I guess I got lucky that first night. As I left Myrtle's plantation, I knew I would return again for a longer stay. Next time, I'll be prepared to capture even more. And when I do, you'll see it first. Just stay informed through my free e-newsletter at joshuapwarren.com.